Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from the US. Yeah, I'm here. This is my last night. I'll be returning to Tokyo tomorrow. And in this video, I want to talk a little bit about what's going on behind the scenes. And it prompted me to talk about this with a question that I received on the backside of Twitter, where somebody today asked me if I could please compare XRP to Bitcoin and Ethereum. And I responded back that they are just not comparable. Well, after thinking for a few hours about my answer, I wasn't totally happy with that because of course we can do some comparison. We can take the cost per transaction, for example. You can see here in this slide that the cost for XRP is 0 0.0004. Then you can see the cost of 0 0.064 Bitcoin Cash and 37 cents for Litecoin, Ethereum at 42 cents and Bitcoin at $1.69. But I ask the question, do you really think this is comparable? Because I don't. Or we can look at the speed of transaction. Only Ethereum really comes close. And if we take a look at the transactions per second, well, clearly uh, with XRP being 1500 and Bitcoin only being 32, do you think it's comparable? Because I don't. Now this slide, by the way, is from a brand new presentation that was recently put together. It's 35 pages long. I don't think you've seen it. I'll put a link to it in the description below. It is from Viral Naik. He is with Ripple. He's in the London office. They are the largest office, by the way, outside of San Francisco, which with uh, nearly 50 employees. Now, Viral has been with Ripple since 2018, so almost two years. Before that, he was the Senior Vice President of Business Executive Technology with Bank of America. Before that, he was with Barclays. Before that, he was with JP Morgan Chase, and before that, he was with Citi. This is another reason why XRP is so difficult to compare because the team driving the use cases behind XRP and the utility that it brings is just, in my opinion, not comparable. So I was really lucky to find the video that matches with that slide presentation. Of course, I'm gonna put it in the description. Viral is warming up an audience that is going to take part in a block sprint hackathon. It's very unique because it will mix students and companies together. You'll see in this website here that the UCL Center for Blockchain Technologies is running the Blockchain Technology Hackathon of the Year this November, so just in a couple of weeks from now, from the 11th to the 22nd, and they are doing it in partnership with Ripple. So what are they doing? They're going to start a revolution. They're going to find solutions. They're going to share ideas. They're going to mesh skills and expertise. They're, they're going to build new solutions for DeFi and payments. Everyone is working on the next game changer. And it is going to take place at Ideal London. This is an accelerator, all right, like an incubator. They are an innovation center in the heart of London's tech city. It is um, famous for its work. More than 50 startups, more than 60 million pounds have been raised, 500 jobs created, 400 plus pilots, a thousand customers introduced and more than 5,000 events held. Very, very impressive. For the winners, over 100,000 pounds in prizes and benefits to be won, including cash prizes totaling 10,000 pounds will be distributed to the top teams. They're going to break it down into some different categories like the fastest app created and the most original and also there'll be a judges award if we take a look at one of the judges it is magdalena baeva she is a ripple employee she leads the commercialization lead at ripple by the way do you know she speaks spanish italian french russian and bulgarian holy cow 
She has also held senior roles at Barclays in the payment strategy. So this is just another case in point. It's very difficult to compare these other projects when you look at is what when you look at what's going on behind the scenes. This is another behind the scenes strength and it is spring. By the way, if you're new to this space, I am going to tell you to read the what is XRP on this website because it's one of the best that I've ever seen. So xpring.io and it is uh, definitely worth a read if you are new. Now, why do these hackathons matter? I will tell you exactly why they matter. Do you know SendFriend? SendFriend is a payments app using XRP to send money from the US to the Philippines. It's one of the use cases that is a shining star within the utility of XRP. It was just in February of this year that SendFriend, SendFriend raised 1.7 million in seed fund uh, funding led by MIT, Ripple, and Barclays. So this startup went through Barclays Accelerator program, which was founded by MIT, and it caught the eye of Ripple. And I just have to give my hat off to Roger because just a couple of hours ago, I learned that Roger acquired the Japanese blockchain development startup, O3 Labs. He also understands the importance of these incubators and accelerator programs to continually develop and innovate in this space. All right, everybody, I am jumping to the fluff. I'm going to talk about drums and why? Well, because when I was asked about that comparison, I just really thought that XRP and Ripple march to the beat of their own drum. So that is what has inspired today's fluff. Japan has a very broad range of drums and through the historical records, it suggests that it was introduced to Japan through Korea and Chinese culture. This influence really arrived in Japan as early as the sixth century. There are many styles. This is a Shime Daiko, and then you can see the Okedo and the Susumi. This one is often played by uh, mm, Maiko san, Geisha. It's part of the Kabuki uh, theater. It's uh, got a very unique gorgeous sound. But for this video, I want to focus on the Wadaiko because there is uh, a lot of performance that you can see with this particular drum. And I just cannot forget to mention Kodo. They are a ensemble out of the island of Sado. And I just, it's just one of those original groups that must be mentioned when you're talking about the ensembles that use the Wadaiko. But for the special, special tidbit of information that I have for you in this fluff, this is about Drum Tao. They are a 30 member group that perform an aerobatic show with traditional instruments and have a very avant-garde sound. Using digital arts, it's one of the best nonverbal entertainments from Japan. And the US and Canada, oh, you are so lucky. They are going to start a tour in January that goes through April, and they will visit more than 60 cities. What a busy, busy group they are. And if you know uh, Ariana, which I just think many of you probably do. She just recently came out with her fifth studio album called Seven Rings. And she does this very unique rendition of the Rogers and Hammerstein, My Favorite Things song and adds her unique rapping style, which I like very much. And the group Drum Tao did a remarkable collaboration with her. I'll put a link to Ariana's performance with Drum Tao in the description below. Do enjoy. It's, it's really quite something. All right, everybody. 
Take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.